Santa Wallet and uh, this morning is a little different uh, video that we're doing. Uh, usually I demonstrate and show off uh, some of our beautiful pianos, one of our beautiful pianos. Actually, turn around and show everybody all our pianos just in case they're not familiar with what we do here. All uh, um, used Yamaha grands and uprights and, uh, and those are our two uh, mascots, our Chrysler and our GTO. We take them to car shows, that's a hobby of ours. But anyway, uh, this morning, I'm not playing the piano for you guys and demonstrating it, but I'm actually gonna talk about something completely different because our piano technician gave me a job to do. I'm not a piano technician, but uh, he told me that um, this is a very simple task, it's just very tedious and you have to have nimble fingers. So, this is the action out of an upright. And what happens is that um, on uprights made before 1980, um, there's certain parts uh, of the piano that, um, that, well, actually they're called butt flanges. And if you see over here, this is a butt flange. I don't know why they call it that. I don't know. Just that's what it's called. And anyway, as you can see here, the thread is broken. That's because is that with the passage of time, these cotton threads, they just disintegrate. I don't know if you can see how easy it is for me to just, just break it. So what happens is that you, you, you lose your repetition with the hammer being able to come back to its resting position a lot quicker. See over here? Same thing, okay, with this. It just pops off, okay? So what happens is that the, the action feels really sloppy. Now, the action on this piano is still brand new. The hammers are fresh and new. Everything's clean. There's no oxidation. But the piano just doesn't play as well as it could with these being replaced. So what happens is that we go and we buy a whole new set of butt flanges, as you can see here. And you see here, these are nylon. So these are going to be really strong. So in order to replace all of these, you have to take all the, the hammers and, uh, and actually all the hammers have to come out and you have to replace this little piece right here, the butt flange, okay? So what you have to do, and I've already done these two sections, and now I'm doing this section. So what happens is that you have to take out every other one, okay? And the reason why you have to take every other one is so that when you replace it, you have a reference for how the hammer is supposed to line up because you're lining up with the original ones that were in the piano before you took them out, okay? So that's why you see every other one here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to replace one to show you how it's done, let's see. So this is number 30, so we're gonna look for number 29. Okay, so here's number, this is number 29. See, all the hammers are numbered, okay? So here's your butt flange that's broken, and we're going to replace this with a nice, fresh, new one, and install it, and show you just what a pain in the blank it really is, because I've been doing this all week, <laughs> okay? So, once you take the hammer out, um, and actually, to take the hammer out, let's just take out this next one here. Let's just do this one so you can see the whole process. So the one thing that you have to do is you have to disconnect the, this. Now, what this is called, I don't know, I forgot. But you, uh, you use your needle nose pliers, you disconnect it, it drops down, okay? So now you have to get it out of the way, which we're gonna do, let's do this one here, okay? So these are already disconnected, all right? So I'm going to pull this out of the way here, okay? And then, in order to get access to the screw to pull the hammer out, you have to pull down the jack. And if you see in here, let's see if we can get the light better. We got a light in here, okay? So, in here, this is the jack. And if you see this, what's it doing? It's blocking your access to the screw. So how the heck are you going to loosen this screw with the jack? pushing right against it. So what, we, what I do is I got this little needle nose pliers and I put it in here and I rest it on it. As you can see, now I can have access to the screw, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this screw out. There we go. I got a fly on my head and this, this fly for the last two days has been bothering me and it's driving me nuts. This one fly, I don't know, I guess it's it goes to sleep at night. When we all go home, it comes in and says, oh, Russell's back. Let me bother him and land on his head while he's doing this intricate work. There we go, okay? So, and actually, on this piano, 
Most of these threads were broken actually in this section here because uh, I guess the piano was played more here. But over here in this section, they're not broken because nobody really played it. So if you see here, look how easy it is to break. It's, it just broke, it just snapped. This is, this is cotton and it just disintegrates, okay? So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the butt flange from the hammer. We put the screw out. So we're gonna replace this old butt flange, which as you can see, is, uh, it has no thread on it, with this new one right here, okay? As you can see, this one's nylon, okay? And all the newer Yamahas from 1980 on, I don't know if you really consider that newer, but they all have nylon, so you're not gonna have this issue. So if you buy a Yamaha upright maybe before 1980, uh, you're gonna have issues with the repetition not being as good as it could be because of just this little tiny thing. Okay, so we're gonna get, take this one off. You see, we just loosen this screw here. Let's get that in there. I'm gonna take this out. We're gonna take this spring, put it in. You have to make sure that this little notch is facing out because it's gonna meet up with this little bar here underneath the screw hole. Now we're gonna tighten it. And so now we're ready. So now you see, you have your spring back, okay? That's gonna, okay, so our flange is installed, but you notice this little piece of, this little pin here, the hinge here is like sticking out. So you gotta cut that off. So I got this little metal plate here, I set on here, and I'm going to give this a little tap to make sure it's all the way down. I'm gonna snip it off. Now you see there's a little piece here hanging out and uh, you really have to get that little nub off because it's gonna rub against the, the, uh, the flange next to it the, or the butt flange next to it. It's gonna rub against it. So you gotta like get it off. I use this little Dremel here. Now I should have goggles on. I don't wear goggles. I just don't look at it directly. There we go. Okay, so now this is ready to be put back into the piano. Now you think that that would be easy, but it's not. Because you have to get the, put the screw in. You gotta get it in here nice. Don't drop the screw. If you drop the screw, oh, let's drop the screw and show you how we get the screw out. So let's say the screw falls out. Oh, you know what, it's probably gonna fall out anyway, because they usually do. This usually takes a couple of tries, okay? So now we're gonna place it in here. Back where it's going to be. Now, if you see, this, all right. Okay, so now, yeah, the screw fell out. The screw is down there. Okay, that happens all the time. So we have our trusty little screw retriever, which is a magnet. So I'm going to get back in here and pick it up. And there it is. The screw got it back. Okay, so that was try one. Now we're going to do number two. Okay, try to get this in here. And nice and easy. Remember, you got to do this 88 times. <laughs> That's why I've been at this all week. Okay, so now get this butt flange up. Get the screwdriver in here. You want to set the bottom of the butt flange on here. Now you get your little screwdriver in. Now you got to feel for where the hole is. And you, what you don't want to do is immediately start screwing it in because you want the screw to meet up with the original threads. So what you do is you're actually gonna turn it counterclockwise till you feel a little click, which I just heard, a little click, which means that now the screw is in place. Oh, not really in place like it should be because if you feel resistance, stop, because there shouldn't be any resistance. You want the screw to meet up with its original thread holes. Otherwise, you're gonna strip, strip out the threads. And there we go, now it's easy to turn. We're right in the place where we need to be. Tighten it up. Now as you see, you wanna get it so that it has an even space in between, okay? So now we're in there properly, okay? So this is now installed. So the next thing is, is that we wanna attach this. You know, it's really silly. And again, I'm not a piano technician, so I don't really know what this piece is called, but I think it's a strap. I think it's called a bridal strap. 
All right, so now you have to push the jack down to get the back check all the way forward so you can grab the bridle strap. Come on, let's get this over. Grab the bridle strap. Let's try to get this. There we go. And you want to get it in there. There we go. And reach over. There you go. This one's done. And just imagine if you have to do that 88 times. And like I said, I'm not a piano technician, but there's certain things that you can do if you're a little mechanical in nature and you have patience, nimble fingers. But uh, it's one of those little details that you have to be aware of when you're, when you're buying a Yamaha Upright. If you're gonna buy a Yamaha Upright before 1980, you really need to have all of these changed, okay? So keep in mind, Piano technicians are usually going to charge about $600 to $750 to do it because the parts are really nothing. The parts are maybe not even $100 to get a set of butt flanges, but it just takes forever to do it. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, video. Thank you very much for watching.